221 BCE. The last enemy fortress falls. For the first time, all of China is under one ruler. Everyone says it was won by swords and spears. They're wrong. It was won by a machine. A bronze mechanism so precise that modern engineers still study it. And it was buried with the first emperor for over 2,000 years. A bronze machine so precise, so deadly, that it changed warfare forever. This is the story of the bronze trigger crossbow, the weapon that helped forge China's first unified empire. And today, we're going inside the tombs of China's first emperor to see exactly how it worked. Most people think ancient warfare was just guys with swords running at each other, but that's completely wrong. By 221 BC, Chinese armies were using mass-produced precision weapons that wouldn't look out of place in a modern factory. We know this because in 1974, farmers digging a well made one of the greatest archaeological discoveries in history. The Terracotta Army, thousands of clay soldiers guarding China's first emperor. But here's what blew archaeologists away. Scattered among those warriors were hundreds of bronze crossbow triggers, each one a masterpiece of engineering. Today, we're going to explore three things. First, how this bronze trigger actually worked and why it was so revolutionary. Second, how China mass-produced these weapons on an industrial scale 2,000 years before the Industrial Revolution. And third, how this one invention helped forge the first empire to unite all of what we now call China. But to understand why this crossbow was so game-changing, we need to go back to where it all began. It's the 6th century BC. China isn't China yet. It's a patchwork of warring kingdoms, each fighting for survival. And they have a problem, a big problem. Traditional bows are powerful, sure, but they take years to master. You need incredible upper body strength, perfect technique, and even then, you can only hold the string back for seconds before your muscles give out. This means your best archers are rare, expensive to train, and in the heat of battle, they can't always get the perfect shot. Chinese military engineers knew there had to be a better way. They needed a weapon that was powerful like a bow, but didn't require a lifetime of training. Something that could be mass produced and used by regular soldiers. Their solution? The crossbow. But here's the thing, it wasn't just the idea of a crossbow that changed everything. China is where the handheld crossbow first shows up in the archaeological record. The real leap was something much smaller, something that fit in the palm of your hand. The bronze trigger mechanism. Let me show you why this was so revolutionary. A regular bow works like this. You pull the string, aim and release. Simple but you're fighting against the bow's power the entire time. Your muscles are doing all the work. The Chinese crossbow flipped this completely. Instead of your muscles holding the power, the trigger mechanism did it for you. Here's how it worked. The crossbow had three main bronze pieces that fit together like a puzzle. When assembled, they could hold massive tension, way more than any human could manage with their bare hands. According to archeological analysis, each trigger consisted of three cast bronze pieces plus two securing bolts. No external spring was needed. When you pulled the trigger, this lever and tumbler system released the string with incredible precision. But here's what made it genius. The trigger pull was light, almost effortless. You could hold the crossbow ready for minutes without getting tired. And when you fired, the release was instant and consistent every single time. This meant an ordinary farmer could become a deadly shot with a fraction of the training an elite archer needed. And unlike archers who got tired after a few shots, crossbowmen could fire all day long. But the real plot twist isn't in the mechanism. It's in the factory. What archaeologists found in the terracotta army pits changed everything we thought we knew about ancient manufacturing. 216 bronze triggers were found in one pit alone. But here's the crazy part. When researchers measured them, they were nearly identical. We're talking about precision that rivals modern manufacturing. This wasn't some blacksmith hammering out weapons one at a time. 
This was industrial scale production in 221 BC. Here's how they did it. Chin State workshops cast the triggers in batches using bronze molds. Each piece was cast separately, filed to precision, then assembled into the wooden stock. The degree of uniformity suggests they were approaching the idea of interchangeable parts, something Europe didn't really systematise until the 18th and 19th centuries. Think about what this means. The dimensions were so consistent that parts from different batches could likely be swapped with little or no fitting. It's an early form of standardised parts, 2,000 years before modern factories. And the numbers were staggering. Excavations at Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum have revealed over 40,000 bronze arrowheads and hundreds of bronze crossbow trigger assemblies. That's just what survived 2,000 years underground. Imagine how many they actually made. But mass production was only part of the story. These weapons had to actually work in battle. By the time of Qin's unification in 221 BC, Chinese crossbows had become the dominant infantry weapon. And there's a good reason why. Range was everything in ancient warfare. The side that could strike first usually won. Chinese crossbows could use very powerful bows safely because of their high strength bronze triggers. This gave them longer range than the shorter bows used by nomadic enemies. But it wasn't just about distance, it was about tactics. Qin armies were organized with infantry, cavalry, chariots and dedicated crossbowmen. Archaeological evidence shows that Qin battle arrays placed crossbowmen up front and on the flanks, firing volleys at range. Picture this, thousands of crossbowmen, all with identical weapons, all firing in coordinated waves. The psychological impact alone would have been devastating, but the physical impact was even worse. Contemporary accounts from the Han Dynasty noted the crossbow's longer range versus the shorter bows of nomads. When your enemy can't even reach you with their weapons, the battle is already over. And unlike European crossbows that came later, Chinese crossbow triggers allowed for a much longer power stroke under a lighter trigger pull. This meant more power with less effort. In later periods, some Chinese crossbow triggers even carried engraved range scales to help with aiming, literally turning the stock into a built-in ballistic calculator. These weren't just weapons, they were precision instruments. Now here's where it gets really interesting because this wasn't just about better weapons. This was about building an empire. When Qin Shi Huang unified China in 221 BC, his armies were equipped with highly standardized crossbows. Huge numbers of soldiers carried weapons built to the same patterns, from parts made to shared specifications. This gave Qin armies a massive logistical advantage. They could supply their forces anywhere in their territory. They could repair weapons in the field they could train new soldiers quickly and effectively. But there's something even more important here. The crossbow represented a new kind of warfare. It wasn't about individual heroes or elite warriors anymore. It was about organization, standardization, and mass production. This perfectly matched Qin's political philosophy. They weren't just conquering territory. They were building a unified state with standardized laws, standardized currency, and standardized weapons. The bronze trigger crossbow wasn't just a tool of conquest, it was a symbol of the new order. But here's what's really mind-blowing. While China was mass-producing precision crossbows, other civilizations were pouring their metalworking genius into different things. Giant torsion catapults, armor, monumental architecture, not handheld machines like this. The crossbow remained a leading weapon until the gunpowder age. After China, it appeared sporadically in other regions. Medieval Europe readopted it around the 10th to 12th centuries. But historians note that Chinese and European crossbows evolved separately. The transmission path, as one study puts it, has still not been satisfactorily explained. European crossbows used a rotating cylindrical nut and lever system. 
Chinese crossbows used their cast bronze lever and tumbler assembly. Completely different approaches to the same problem. Whether or not anyone in Europe ever saw a Chinese trigger, they didn't clone it. They ended up inventing their own solutions to the same problem, a rotating nut and lever, instead of a bronze cam and tumbler. Even the Mongol Empire, which conquered China, never made the crossbow the star of their army. Their chronicles obsess over cavalry archery and later gunpowder weapons. Chinese-style crossbows kept going in specialist units, but they were no longer the main character on the battlefield. But here's where our story takes an unexpected turn. Because despite all this evidence, there are still huge gaps in what we know. Take the repeating crossbow, for example. Chinese tradition credits the strategist Zhu Ge Liang with inventing it in the third century CE. But the oldest known example is actually from the fourth century BCE. A Chu state tomb with a 20 bolt magazine that could fire two bolts per pull. So either the story is wrong, or his name got attached to an invention that was already centuries old. We simply don't know. And what about troop numbers? Some later writers throw around numbers like tens of thousands of Qin crossbowmen, but archaeology doesn't give us a reliable headcount. We know there were a lot of them, just not exactly how many. The big numbers you see online come from much later writers, not hard archaeological counts. Even the performance claims are disputed. Many medieval accounts exaggerate crossbow power, claiming they could fire through walls or armour. The actual ballistic performance of ancient crossbows is hard to verify. What we do know is this. The bronze trigger crossbow was real, it was mass-produced, and it helped build China's first unified empire. But the full story is still being uncovered, one archaeological dig at a time. So what happened to this revolutionary technology? The crossbow remained a military mainstay through most of Imperial China. The Han Dynasty inherited and expanded Qin's crossbow forces. Han literature and tomb finds show crossbows in frontier and civil wars for centuries. In fact, crossbows were still being issued to Chinese armies as late as the Ming and Qing dynasties. Even when gunpowder weapons became dominant, crossbows remained in service as backup weapons. But perhaps the most important legacy wasn't military. It was industrial. The bronze trigger crossbow proved that ancient civilizations could achieve mass production, standardization, and precision manufacturing. It showed that with the right organization and technology, you could arm entire armies with identical, high-quality weapons. This wasn't just about warfare. This was about the power of systematic thinking, careful engineering and industrial organisation. Principles that would eventually reshape the entire world. Today, modern archaeology is still revealing new secrets about these ancient weapons. Recent engineering analysis has shown just how sophisticated the bronze trigger mechanism really was. Whether or not Qin craftsmen could have written out the equations, the end result behaves like a piece of advanced engineering. Modern engineers who've reverse engineered these triggers say they look like something out of an engineering textbook. The three-piece design spreads the stress, the lever gives you serious mechanical advantage and the alloys are tough enough to survive 2,000 years in the ground. And we're still finding new examples. Every few years, archaeologists uncover more crossbow triggers, more arrowheads, more evidence of this ancient arms industry. Each discovery adds another piece to the puzzle, but it also raises new questions. How many crossbows did they really make? How far did this technology spread? What other innovations are still buried, waiting to be discovered? But let's zoom out for a moment, because this story isn't really about crossbows. It's about something much bigger. The bronze trigger crossbow represents a turning point in human history. The moment when warfare became industrial. When victory went not to the bravest warriors, but to the most organized societies. This was the beginning of modern military thinking. Standardization over customization. Mass production over individual craftsmanship. Systematic training over natural talent. 
and it happened in China 2,000 years ago. Think about that. While the Mediterranean world was pouring its metalworking into legions, siege engines and temples. China had worked out precision manufacturing and large-scale logistics for handheld machines like this. What we can say is this. The state workshops were capable of turning out weapons on a scale big enough to arm massive conscript armies and to keep them supplied. This wasn't just advanced for its time. In many ways, it was ahead of our time. So the next time someone tells you that ancient people were primitive, Remember the bronze trigger crossbow. Remember that 2,200 years ago, Chinese engineers designed a precision mechanism with three bronze pieces that could hold massive tension and release it with the pull of a finger. Remember that they mass produced these triggers with tolerances that rival modern manufacturing. Remember that they used these weapons to build China's first unified empire, creating a template for organized warfare that lasted for millennia. The bronze trigger crossbow wasn't just a weapon, it was a revolution. A revolution in engineering, in manufacturing and in the very nature of power itself. And buried in tombs across China, thousands of these bronze triggers are still waiting. Silent witnesses to one of humanity's greatest technological leaps, the precision mechanism that forged an empire. What other ancient technologies are we underestimating? What other civilizations achieved industrial scale production thousands of years before we thought it was possible? And if you enjoyed this deep dive into ancient Chinese engineering, make sure to subscribe. We're uncovering the lost technologies that built our world, one discovery at a time.